exploring our podcast. Nothing is sweeter than SwiftCast. Hey guys, welcome to episode 57 of SwiftCast. Hey. Hey, Hey, what's going on guys? We have a really exciting episode for you guys today. Joining us to talk all about his experience at the recent Ed Sheeran concert is our favorite YouTuber, Alexander Gold. Yay! Yay. So he's going to be joining us in just a minute. He was lucky enough to go to Ed's show in New York this past weekend and had a really amazing time with some really cool experiences that we wanted him to tell us all about. So, But actually, Steph, you were there too. I was. I was so happy to be there in New York City. I I had a really good feeling when I bought those tickets that Taylor would show up at Ed show just because I knew she would be getting back from Asia. So as soon as I entered the venue, I looked up at the balconies and I said, Taylor's going to be on one of those for sure. But still, when she actually came out, even though I had a really good feeling that this was going to happen, I still completely fangirled and just had a big moment where (laughs) I was shaking and I was like, oh my gosh, Taylor is right there. And she's just up there waving. It's like on the balcony in summer air, just waving (laughs) at all of us, like the queen that she is. And it was really awesome. Now, where was your seat? I was on the floor. It was general mission and we were Mm -hmm. really crammed in there like sardines and I'm pretty short, so I was kind of, I was probably 20 rows back, which was good because I had a good sight line right to Taylor's balcony, but I could not see Ed at all, at all. Oh. But you could hear him, and that's what's important. Exactly. And in a way, it was good because then I could just look up at Taylor and listen to Ed. Um, she knew every word to every song. He sang a new song called Photograph, which no one had ever heard before, but she was up there singing every word. Um, I feel like we had a moment during I See Fire because she was jamming out on the balcony and I was jamming out on the floor. And for some reason, nobody else was really dancing around to that song, which I didn't get. But I swear we had a moment where we we saw each other jamming out. Could all be in my head, but I'm going to stick with it. No, it totally happened. (laughs) I gotcha. It was just incredible. I got some good pictures and video of her. And then right after the show, I ran out back because I figured she has to leave the building somehow. She's probably going to come out the back. And eventually people started leaving because they didn't want to wait around. And I ended up right behind the barricade. So I I had my camera ready. I had my huge Taylor bag. Oh, and by the way, I also had my hoodie with the 13 on the back of it. And at the very end of the show, Ed asked everybody to swing sweatshirts. So I held the 13 up above my head, like directly in her line of sight and was just hoping that she would see it. I doubt she did, but it was still fun to imagine that she could see the big red 13. But anyways, so I was waiting at the barricade and they started pulling all of Ed's equipment out onto a truck which he has way more equipment than you would think. And I was starting to lose hope. I was thinking, oh, you know, they're never going to come out. Maybe there's a different door. And unfortunately, Taylor never did come out. She must have gone out some other door. But Ed walked out. It was just a split second. He had to run on the bus to get to Canada. But he did look at us and wave. I didn't get a picture of him or anything, but it was still pretty cool. He is way smaller in person than he looks like when he he always says that he's chubby which i don't understand i never thought he was but in person he is so much skinnier than he looks like he does on tv which is the same i think with everybody the camera really does add 10 pounds uh but the only other thing i wanted to mention was kind of related to this in ed's song take it back there's a lyric where he says i'm the singer you don't want to see shirtless That might not be the exact lyric, but it's something like that. And when he sang that, the crowd just like cried out in protest to that lyric. (laughs) And I got some snaps of Taylor and she was just protesting right along with the crowd. She was like waving her hands around like, no. And the swearing feels were kicking in, you know, I think for everyone. (laughs) So that was really cool. But I can't wait to talk to Alexander Gold next about his experience with meeting Taylor and Ed. All right. So now, without further ado, joining us, we have Alexander Gold. 
Hi. Hi there. Hey. How hey. are you guys doing? Doing great. I'm so glad you can join I us. I know. I'm so, I'm so happy you guys contacted me. This is fun. Well, we had to talk to you because you pretty much had the best weekend of all time, and that is pun intended. Oh my god. Like every single pun. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was red. So you basically got a huge sort of surprise from Ed Sheeran on Twitter that led to this crazy adventure that you got to have this weekend. Yes, I um I had been trying all week. I I I had tweeted with Ed back in November. Um, he trolled me um and saw me tweet about Taylor and Ed uh, needing to do a Watch the Thrones duet album, <laughs> and he replied back in November saying like oh, we have, like, pale white people in Berlin coming out next week. <laughs> and then, you know, I, like, replied and was like, oh, my God, I love you, expecting him never to reply. And then he ended up replying, like, five times, and we had a conversation. Um, and I said, I would love to buy you a drink next time you're in New York. And he said, yeah, when I'm back for the second album. So I knew he was in town this week, and I found I, I realized there was a concert this weekend. So I started midweek trying to like get my followers to help me get him to to remember and notice me. And there nothing was happening, and he wasn't replying. And then on Friday night, I was walking my dog, and I just like right after, of course, tweeting some like funny Taylor Swift witch fan fiction tweet about her like wishing Happy Friday the Thirteenth to the dark night sky. <laughs> I tweeted at Ed Sheeran, um, I'm praying to Taylor Swift that I find a ticket for your concert tomorrow night. And then I put my phone in my pocket, walked to my apartment, and I opened my phone and I have a DM from him um, being like, here's my email address, like email me and I'll hook you up with a plus one. And I, I was convinced that it was a troll. Like a com I was convinced that there was like something was wrong with Twitter. Like there was something was broken. Like this was not happening. Like on Friday the 13th during a full moon, this was not happening. <laughs> and, um, I got back into my house and I sort of like took the DM and I like kept clicking the icon and going over to his Twitter page and then going back to the DM and just clicking the icon, just like making sure that they were connected. And this was Ed Sheeran. And then I was like, Oh my God, I have to write him an email. How do you even do that? Like, dear Ed Sheeran, like, what do you even say? <laughs> I, like, I, like, wrote, I, like, <laughs> I don't even know. Like, I just wrote the email and I was just like, hey, like, I was like, I'm, like, in shock. This is amazing. Like, I was like, I hope you, like, understand, like, I'm not, like, some, like, creepy stalker online. I'm not trying to be weird. I was just like, when I saw you at Madison Square Garden, I was really inspired by your performance. And, and, you know, I have always sang my whole life and you know it it would just be an honor to to meet you and and say thank you you know for your gift or whatever i i phrased it some way that was not in any way eloquent but um <laughs> and he replied and he was like no problem man just give me full names for the list um hope i see you soon and i was like hope i see you soon holy beep and um <laughs> And yeah, and then I, I went to the concert literally just being like, okay, he probably just gave you general admission tickets, like, everything's gonna be fine, everything's normal, like, don't expect anything, you're not gonna meet Ed Sheeran, like, yes, Taylor Swift, leader of the coven, is in town, but no, <laughs> you're not gonna meet Taylor Swift. Like, I was like, I was like, stay calm, because I have the tendency to be like, oh my god, I'm about to meet Ed Sheeran, like, I, like, I have the tendency to to think something good is gonna happen and then immediately like blow it completely out of proportion. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm I am Ed Sheeran's boyfriend, like we are like I'm his best friend, like I am gonna be best friend. Like like I will always take it too far. <laughs> so I stayed level headed and then I got there and they gave me my envelope and I opened it and one of the things in the envelope was not a ticket. It was a friggin' all access pass. What went through your mind at that point? What went through my mind at that point is, do I have a change of underwear? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing dark pants so you can hide it if you poop yourself. But like, do I have underwear? <laughs> Am I going to smell like poop when I meet Ed Sheeran? Like, that's what you worry about. Like, that's like, oh, like, man. is Ed Sheeran going to judge me because I smell like turd? So <laughs> that happened. And my friend was sort of just like, I was like, do you mind if I like go explore backstage? Like I've had all access once before. It was for like a Z100 um, jingle ball pre-show event. And all access is cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like one of those people that like, you know, it's like, oh, all I had was all access. And I'm used to, you know, being <laughs> like, no, 
the thing with all access is that I'm not a like slick, chill person. Like that's just not, I like, you know, with all access, you're allowed to walk everywhere. I walk backstage and like, you know, every time you walk by a security guard, they just see your pass and don't ask any questions or whatever. And like, every time I walk by them, I'm like, I have a badge. I'm all access. I'm, <laughs> I can be here. And they're like, you're, I mean, you're fine. Like I, and I'm like, I know I'm just, I, Ed Sheeran gave me an all access pass. So I'm allowed to be here. <laughs> that's, that's me walking everywhere. And there are security people at every door and every single door. I'm like, I'm like, Hey, sorry. Yeah, I'm allowed to be here. I have all access. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. Like that's, that was me the whole time. So I like explored and Hammerstein, Hammerstein's, sorry, that was my dog. Hi doggy. Hammerstein has a, <laughs> um, he says hi back. Um, Hammerstein has a, has, is, is designed in a way that like you can find yourself like walking upstairs and then downstairs and then back up and then down and then through a hallway. And then suddenly you are literally right back where you ended up. Um, mm-hmm. So I was walking around and I was like, all right, Ed is not here. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'll just go back to my friend and like find him later. And then I walk into the like back area where the artists and, you know, the people come in and I hear like a security guard be like, uh, guys, we got to clear this area. Uh, they are coming through. And I was like, they, they, <laughs> who is they? Who, what, who are you? And I was, I like looked at them and I was like, I have one, I have an all access pass <laughs> Two, um, <laughs> Who is, so when you say they, do you mean, uh, uh, Sheeran or Taylor? Like, like, I was like, who are you talking about? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, chill. No, I'm fine. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, um, they told me to go up and wait in like a friends and family room. And I went up and it's like full of like already eaten pizza from like the band that opened and like, like, like wing bones because they had, because they ate the wings. And I'm just there by myself, like pacing. And then I hear, I hear people start to walk up and I hear her voice. I wow. like, and I was like, oh, oh my God. And I was like, what? And I was like, is she about to come into this room? Is she about to walk past me? Like, is she going to side eye me? I was like, is she going to like, is her security guard going to like push me away? Like, Ooh, what's going to happen? <laughs> and, um, and I hear someone, you know, mention that there are a lot of stairs and she just, she just says, Oh, it's just like a nice little leg workout. Taylor Swift said leg workout. So now obviously I'm going to start doing leg workouts, but <laughs> um, she, she walked up and she like looked in and she waved and she was like, ha, or no, she said, Hey. And I like, I was like, oh my God, she has hated me like a gay man. And I was just like, hey. <laughs> and then, and then she was gone. And then the security guard was like, yeah, Ed's coming up. They start, they're starting the show at nine when someone had told me eight 30. So then I was confused and then I didn't know what was going on and I was waiting and waiting. And then suddenly I heard like music starting and I was just like, okay, the concert is starting. Like I was like, it's, it's starting. So I go to try to find the balcony that Taylor's on because I thought maybe that's where like I'm supposed to be watching. Like I was like, where, like I had no idea where I was supposed to go. And so I walk and I'm like walking through hallways and suddenly like hammer, like the hallways of Hammerstein, I ended up back on the floor. <laughs> so I watched the concert next to the stage. Um, and with his like, you know, with his team all around me and, and with, you know, whatever other VIPs. Um, and one of his team members just, I like asked him, I was just like, listen, like, I was like, I like, don't know what's going on. I was like, Ed gave me this pass and I would really like love to be able to thank him, but I don't know if that's possible. And he was like, Ed might not be staying. He has to go to Toronto. Like just go position yourself by this door. And if he comes through, like he comes through. Um, and that way you'll definitely be able to like see him if he doesn't stay. So when the concert ended, I went there and the concert was amazing, by the way, like hearing him sing a song from the fault in our stars, like live, like holy hell. Um, but so I go up and he's not coming out the door and I was just like, okay, I'll just go back to that friends and family room. And I go and like, he pops up into the room and, and is like, oh my gosh, where's your friend? Like, did he not get an all access? And I was just like, no. Um, and so I ran, he gave me an, another all access and I went to go try to find my friend and I couldn't find him. And I ran back into the room. I know that you guys care probably most about the Taylor parts. So that's why I'm starting to talk. Oh, we love it too. I'm, Don't worry. I'm yeah, blabbing. we love it. But, um, but, oh my God. So I get back to the room and Ed's like, 
Ed's like, do you have a drink? Go blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I have a drink. I just don't like have a bottle opener. And he just like takes out a lighter and like popped off the top of my bottle. Like it was just like. Like a true like, British I, man. I, yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I don't even, what? And then he was like, have you met Taylor before? And I was like, um, yeah, I like met her after the Speak Now tour like a long, long time ago. But I was like, I, I didn't really talk to her. It was, it was one of those like. I was the plus one at that thing, so I let my friend have his moment. Well, hold on a second. We want to hear more about that. So you went to the Speak Now concert. Did your friend get the tea party, or how did that work? It was the last night of the Speak Now tour in New York, Madison Square Garden, the one that um, James Taylor and Selena Gomez performed at. It must have been oh. so amazing to be there. Yeah. Yeah, it was... It was crazy, but my friend Sam Lansky is a writer, um, and he, you know, if if he turned me into a Swifty, I mean, I I mean, like I I have always like appreciated Taylor Swift, but like I have a tendency to when if I meet someone and they're a really good person, I will be like that's what made me a fan of Taylor. I was <laughs> Sam brought me as his plus one. Oh wait, so his story. He wrote a piece for MTV Buzzworthy about her upcoming album Red. And he wrote, you know, why it should be amazing and who she's working with and why like Taylor is one to watch. And Taylor read his article, had her publicist find out his information, and she sent him a handwritten note thanking him for the article. Wow. Sounds like our Taylor. And it wasn't like some, uh, you know, some crap celebrity thing that like their publicist wrote and they just signed like Mm -hmm. she cited actual parts that she liked from the article she said that she loved like the correlations he drew between between country music and rap storytelling and uh she put on the back of the card her tour manager's cell phone number and she said i want to meet you so that's incredible sam was out of he was living in portland at the moment so he just flew for the madison square garden concert back to new york and he took me and i leave work and i'm in the cab and sam is texting me and i'm like late and sam is texting me being like we're all like we're by the door we're about to be let in like you're gonna be late and he was like you are not gonna ruin this for me like he he was like (laughs) like he was stressing out and like like he was having like a fan attack he was just like, you need to get your butt over here because I will go without you. I will leave you. <laughs> I was like, he was like, I am not messing up anything with Taylor Swift. This is whoa. Like, he was like, I am not like, and I got out of my cab in a downpour and just like ran through traffic to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and of course I get there and nothing happens for like 40 minutes. <laughs> but, like I get there and like we get pulled into the room. Um, and it's like this gorgeous room backstage, like it was set up, I guess like a tea party or like a circus or something that was draped. And I remember there were delicious chicken fingers and cookies and, mm. um, Taylor is being led around by her publicist to, you know, meet whatever the various, uh, VIPs are be- backstage. And the publicist brings Taylor towards Sam. And before the publicist can even say anything, she goes, Oh my gosh, you're Sam Lansky. And she ran and jump hugged him. And I, I literally had to move out the way because (laughs) she was running so quickly. And I let, they had a talk and I just sort of stood on the side and like took pictures because I knew like, you know, he was going to have a fan attack and wasn't going to remember the moment. And I wanted him to be able to like, you know, still have stuff Mm -hmm. and remember it. We call it a swift attack. Okay. A swift attack. Um, (laughs) And he swifted all over the place. And um, (laughs) he, I took a picture of them together and then Taylor was like, don't you want to hop in? Let's get a picture. And I was just like, <laughs> and like, I, I went and I took a picture with her and she was very, very sweet. And I just, I like, if someone, if, if I meet someone in the industry and I meet, you know, people randomly all the time, you know, if someone has a bad attitude or if I get a bad impression of someone, like I literally, it turns me off of all of their music. And I, I had been like a light Taylor Swift fan. Like I liked speak now a lot. I think Speak Now is a perfect album. I think I might even like it more than Red. And I I loved, obviously, You Belong With Me. Um, but I'm not a huge country fan. And after meeting her and after seeing her be so genuine and so kind to a friend of mine that I care about, who I know, you know, adores her. I mean, he loves her. I was a fan forever. And then um, we got a backstage tour by her mom. And then, uh, yeah, so that was my first experience with Taylor. 
Your picture is really cute with her from that night. Thank God it's cute because I was literally like, like getting, I don't know how much hair product you guys use, but if you are using hair product, you get caught in the rain. You are disgusting. I was like, <laughs> my hair was a mess. I was like trying to be put together. When Taylor ran over, I still had chicken in my mouth. Like I was like, not like I was a mess. And you know, Taylor is a queen. And, um, I mean, this, you know, when I met her then, you know, I hadn't, you know, believed so much of her being a witch. Now I do. But, <laughs> but, you know, that's another story. I still think, I feel like red was a big transformation for her. So meeting her now, you know, I felt like it was a lot different experience. She was a lot more, she seemed a lot more confident, poised and legs for days. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to my night. Ed was like, okay, well, I'll make sure to introduce you. And I was just like, oh, yeah, chill, really. Okay, cool. Um, and so then I turned to my right, and Taylor is walking into the room, and I'm sort of standing on the back of this, like, leaning on this couch. Ed is next to me talking to a bunch of people, and Taylor's right in front of me. And I just, I, like, looked at her, and I just, like, lost it. And I was just like, I'm sorry, but you are flawless. <laughs> and, she, and she, like, looked at me shocked. I mean, when isn't she? But she looked at me shocked and was like, oh my God, thank you for saying that. That's so sweet. And I was like, no, like, you look amazing. Like, I love your dress. And she was like, really? And she was like, I just like, didn't know what to wear tonight. And this was just like a, like an off the rack rag and bone in the back of my closet. And I was just like, oh yeah, no, me too. Same. Same. Yeah, no, I, exact, yeah, exact, same thing. Me too. And then I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but like I met you, you probably don't, but I met you with like Sam Lansky after this being down towards you goes, Oh my God. Yes. With Sam. And she was like, how is Sam? Like, how is he? And I, and she like was like, is he good? Like, what's his job? How's his boyfriend? Like, did they move in? Like she like knows about his life, Aww. which is crazy <laughs> to me. Um, but I like told her, you know, I updated her on his life and she was like, okay. But importantly, she was like, is he happy? And I was just like, he is very happy. And she was like, good. He should be happy. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God, Taylor. Um, <laughs> and then I like told her, I was like, you know, my favorite part of the Speak Now tour besides you, obviously, was Sam and I get to our seats and we look over to our right and there is this girl, I think by herself, dressed as Meredith in like a full head to toe cat suit <laughs> um, with a sash that said Meredith. And she like, had like Christmas lights around her and she, I just like love we were just like obsessed with her she like knew every song she was having the time of her life as a cat and um <laughs> and Taylor you know started giggling and like covered her face and was like laughing and she was like I have to ask you you know I've been contemplating you know I really love my cat and I'm not sure if I want another or not and she was like if I got two cats like would I be a cat lady and I don't know where I pulled this out of but I suddenly was like no Taylor, three cats is a cat lady, two cats is a party. And she, she like looked at me and made this face and she was like, what? And I was just like, that was really, that was a weird thing I just said. That was really weird. And she was like, yeah, that was really weird. That was just like, yeah. And I can picture exactly how she said that too. Yeah. And then, um, Ed was still talking to people and Taylor was like trying to make her way to him. And so I just kept on talking at her and, um, I was like, I have to also tell you, I was like, I really love the fact that you just moved to New York and like every day is Taylor Swift fashion week. And I was just like, I was like in a non creepy way. I've seen like all the pictures of your outfits every day. And like, you literally look perfect. And she was like, she was like, you're kidding. And she was like, I do this all like, she was like, I don't have anyone helping me. Like, this is just, you know, me. In which case I wanted to reply like, well, I mean, <laughs> Like when you own every single dress from every single designer, I'm sure you can dress yourself. Like it's a little different, you know, when it, all I have in my closet is like the same V-neck from Gap. Like I was like, what, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, she was like, I do this all my, all on my own. And I was like, no, like I was like, it is flawless. Like never, like just like keep all you have to do is just walk out of your apartment every day and it will be amazing. And she then went, Oh my God, stop. And she pushed my shoulder. And I pushed her back. I like pushed her shoulder back. And I had this, I like thought for a moment that like a security guard or like Taylor's eyes were going to go black and I was going to light up in flames. Like I don't, <laughs> like something was going to happen and I was going to die. Because <laughs> no one nudges Taylor. <laughs> no, you don't, you, no, absolutely not. 
you do not, Taylor touches you, you do not touch her. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then she, she went and she started talking to Ed and she walked up to him and, and gave him a hug and they were talking and she like ruffled up his hair. Um, and they seemed really, really, like they were really, really cute. And then Ed was like, have you guys met? And Taylor was like, yeah, we met. Like we were just talking. He's really, really nice. Like, how do you guys know each other? And Ed was like, oh, he's just like a really nice guy from Twitter who always says nice stuff to me. And I randomly saw his tweet last night before I was going to bed. So I decided to just like invite him. And she was like, oh, that's cute. And I was like, but Ed, like, I was like, do you remember our first like tweets? Like what we talked about? And he was like, yeah, he like talked about how we need to do a Watch the Throne album. And I said, like, I, you know, made a thing about, he, he said that he replied with something about like pale people in Berlin. And Taylor laughed and, and we had a, some jokes about that. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah. And then I told her I was really excited for her new album and, and, uh, we talked about that for a little Did bit. Did she divulge anything about the album? Um, you know, I feel like I can say enough with the fact that she put her hands over her face and like blushed and smirked and then like <laughs> put her hands on her cheeks and was just like shook her head smiling. And I was just like, girl, I know. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've heard stuff on my own from other people. Um, but I mm -hmm. mean, I, you know, I think we've come to see that. Taylor Swift is not just any country artist and she's not just, she's, she's not comfortable plateauing or doing the same thing. So with the growth that we've seen in all of her albums, I expect nothing but, you know, an epic mm -hmm. continuance of that growth. I think that she has gone from being sort of just like, you know, Miss Cute to really being someone to watch out for on every front i mean she's proven to be more than a country artist i know that she you know probably has country fans that wish that she stuck with country but i think with an artist like her and with someone with a voice like hers and 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 such a great talent and also such a great person um when you have so, that much to give you know you can't really contain it taylor is going to continue to grow as a person and continue to grow with her music and i think wherever she takes it it may not be exactly where the fans want it to go at times, but I think that ultimately she needs to, as an artist, explore the areas she wants to explore. And I think anywhere she explores, she's going to excel at because I think that she is that talented. Well said. I think that sums up sort of everything that we talk about every week when we talk about album five. Yeah. I mean, I, I got a lot of, I tweeted something about, about, you know, the, the fact that Max Martin is doing most of the album. And I said like, Oh my God, Max Martin is doing this. Like, and I used an expletive and I got a lot of people replying. It was funny because I meant it in a very positive way. I think there's Max Martin is a guaranteed hit maker. I mean, you work with Max Martin and you're a big artist. Like you are going to have a hit song. Like that's just it. And I think that Taylor working with him and working with him more just will help her grow and help her explore these new areas. And, you know, on top of all this, she could always revert back to country and take all this area that she's explored and use it to really reinvent the country genre for women. Yeah. But going back to that, I tweeted that and, and, you know, half the responses I got were like, yeah. And then half the people were like, I know, right. I wish she would never do that. And it's just like, I feel like with social media, it gives fans this opportunity to really feel like they have a right to have a strong input in everything someone they like does. And they don't. And it's, it's cool. The great thing about social media is it really connects you and you have that ability. I mean, when I was younger, there was no chance in this type of connection with an artist or being noticed in this way online. And now friggin' Taylor Swift can bless your Instagrams. Like, what the hell? <laughs> we were lucky to get a si something signed in the mail from the fan club. Yeah, like, yeah, when you were younger, like, you had to, like, write letters, and you might get, like, a, a letter that, with, like, a stamped signature. Like, a signature that's just on a stamp that the publicist just replies with. Um, but I think, you know, the downside of social media is just that, you know, fans can really feel like they have a right to an opinion on every aspect of their life. And I, I think one, being a fan and working in the industry, you know, there's a side of me that could go into that party backstage and report it a hundred percent without, you know, being aware of things that maybe I shouldn't be mentioning because within that space, 
it's sort of an unspoken agreement that you're all mm -hmm. backstage hanging out and this is not like you're not on the record. And then, you know, there's the, you know, there's the other side that's like, oh my God, tell it all, tell all the secrets. <laughs> and I think that, I think that, you know, you sort of have to respect that they do have a life too. And, and Taylor as an artist has to explore things for herself and has to do things. And she could mess up and it could be the wrong choice, but ultimately her making those wrong choices or those right choices are what's going to further her growth as an artist and help her realize different things about herself. She could decide she wants to do more rock type music or more stuff like the, you know, the more edgy stuff on red. And, you know, she could suddenly realize, oh my God, I just want to go back to acoustic. And, you know, she would never find her way back to acoustic if she hadn't gone there and explored that stuff. I feel like I just went on a tangent and lost what I was talking about. That was a no, perfect was tangent. I think that you just covered everything everybody thinks right now. I think there are people in the industry who need to be shaped and who need a hundred people working on them at all times. And I think it's easy to see who those people are and they aren't authentic and they aren't really an artist. They're just a great voice. And there's nothing wrong with that. Let me tell you, I appreciate a good packaged act too. Like I love some crap pop um, that I don't even think is crap, but you know, with artists like Taylor and with Beyonce and with Lady Gaga and, and Rihanna, you know, at times and, and, and all these artists, you sort of just have to let them do them and like let them see and explore different stuff. And it could be a flop. It could be a mess. I don't think that Taylor has it in her to flop at all. Um, yeah, I think she's proven possible. that she's probably, I think she's proven that she's possibly like the act to be afraid of in all of music. I mean, besides maybe Beyonce, but, uh, and Adele, but I think those three, like, I think she's unstoppable. So I'm, I'm, ex I am excited for her and I couldn't be more excited because she is a genuine good person. I mean, people give her a lot of, a lot of smack for her reactions at award shows and her dancing. Um, that is me dancing at every single party. I doesn't have a camera on me. Like Taylor Swift is everyone. Taylor Swift is us. She is our spirit. Like Taylor, like when she accepts awards, she it's be, and she is surprised. It's because she's genuinely surprised. See, my dog feels the same way. <laughs> um, like it's because that's her genuine reaction. And I think that people are going to hate and people are going to say whatever, but she is a good person. She has a good heart. She's kind. Um, she's sincere and she's genuine. Um, and for anyone in the industry to remember anything about a single person, like a minute after they leave is like, I mean, that says it all, you know, you can, I've had people that I've met, you know, like literally 10 times. And like every time they'll be like, hi, nice to meet you. And I'm like, I, I, I know you. Like I, like I, like I, like what? Um, and you're just like, okay, you're like, girl, bye. But <laughs> Taylor is bigger than all of that. And I, I, I'm excited for her to explore everything. And she's great. And she, and, and we took that selfie. And when I said, let's do Taylor Swift surprise face, she like, she like got giddy. She was like, Ed, surprise face. And then Ed took my camera and turned it into a selfie. And I was just like, girl, whatever you want, just whatever. Um, yeah. And then at one point she was watching the World Cup and she looked really bored. And I was like, oh, my God, I would be bored watching the World Cup, too. And um, her brother was so hot and so nice and, you know, asked me like real questions about like my career and what I do and and advice. And I would talk to him about stuff that he's up to. Um, and, and, and then Taylor, you know, told me she thought I made a great career decision. And I was like, well, now I know that I made a great career decision. And, um, and it was great. It was great. I did ask Taylor if we could do a vine and she said next time. Um, so hopefully that means next time. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, I can see Ed again and, you know, maybe Taylor will be there. Maybe I need to, I need to now become friends with Lord. So that way I can get the whole coven together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Lord will probably like touch my head and then steal my youth. <laughs> I'm dying over this whole witchcraft analogy. I remember a few weeks ago when the Billboard Awards were on, I was watching Lord's performance and I really, really love her music. But when she performs, she really looks like she's doing some sort of ritual to me. It's like it all, it's just like a running joke with me. I think it's hysterical and it, 
people seem to enjoy it when I tweet stuff about Taylor being a witch. It's all obviously in fun <laughs> yeah. and a joke. But I, I do find it hysterical when, like, I see a picture of Taylor or, like, just when, when people that Taylor works with, like, all do well or... I don't know. It's just funny. It's like, I just find it hysterical. I already have another one planned that I haven't tweeted yet just because I've tweeted so much about them in the last two days. Like I don't want people who aren't in that fan base to think that I've turned into like a Taylor Swift update account, which there's nothing wrong with that. But like, I just want to like space it out, but don't worry. I already have one planned. I don't know if you saw that picture that some fan took of her at like the, the nine 11 Memorial and like, she's looking dead at the camera like that person died like she killed (laughs) like she looked at that camera that person will die like they 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 are not dead yet they are dead like like the way she looked at that camera it was just like you're done you're done (laughs) goodbye like say call your loved ones talk to your family like write your will you are done you um but like stuff like that i find funny and I very much with my social media, like if I, if I make a joke and I notice people, you know, are enjoying it or it's a hit, you know, I'll, it'll become a thing. And Taylor Swift's coven has become a thing. And that, that's what I was going to ask her about with a vine. I wanted her to induct me. Um, <laughs> and I will bring it up with her because I think she would find it funny, but who knows? I mean, you'll, you know, you'll know if I bring it up with her and she doesn't find it funny because, well, I will, I will be dead. I will not be living anymore. <laughs> Taylor Swift will kill me. Like, I will be silenced. Well, it sounds like you had the most epic weekend of all time. It was insane. It was absolutely insane. And I couldn't, you know, all of this, this types of stuff has all become possible, you know, through social media and through, you know, the people that follow me being so supportive and, You know, I, without a doubt, I don't think that Ed, you know, this could have happened if, you know, I didn't have such great people being so supportive and kind online and and helping me make these things happen. That reminds me of what you said in your video. You said something along the lines of how, you know, it was just by chance that Ed ended up happening. He saw your tweet and that, you know, there might be thousands, if not millions of other fans tweeting him really nice things too. And he just can't see them all. Yeah, well, if you notice also, he uses Echo Phone, which is an app that, you know, like with Twitter for iPhone, you can sort of, you have a better chance of getting a celebrity's attention if like people are retweeting and favoriting your tweet because it'll show up, you know, in the Twitter app like that. Like it'll show up that people are retweeting or favoriting something you're mentioned in, but on the Echo Phone app, it only shows up like once. Um, mm-hmm. So I knew that like, I, I realized after I saw that he was using Echo Phone that like I couldn't just like try to get all of my followers to like favor a tweet. So it just kept showing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they had to actually be tweeting new tweets at him for him to have a chance of seeing. Yeah. And like I tweeted about and so many people were being so nice. And all the, the Swifties that have followed me since then are like I've had I've had a lot of fandoms like just be like horribly mean to me if anything good happens. Mm-hmm. And like. I so far, I've, I've seen like a few people just tweeting jealous stuff. And if I favorite it, they, of course, like five seconds later are like, I was just kidding. I love you. Like, oh my God. Like, oh, my God, you're my best, favorite person. Like, thank you so much. Oh my God. And I'll be like, girl, okay, girl, I see you. Um, yeah. I'm like, thank you. Um, but, uh, what, what was I going to say? Um, but, um, but every, like all the Swifty, I mean, I've never had this many crazy memes and edits tweeted at me and I have my I'm tagged in so many pictures on Instagram like my notifications on all social media are just like completely screwed at the moment like (laughs) they are just all off the chain and I couldn't be happier and this is you know this is something that I would love to do more of in my life and provide those types of experiences and I've weirdly been able to become friends with some of my idols through social media and and if I can, you know, provide some inside experience or or at least fangirl out so other people can just fangirl with me and live vicariously, if I can help in any way, you know, that's fun to me. It's I mean, everyone's just been so nice. So people can follow you on Twitter at Alexander Gold. And then that's also your Tumblr as well, correct? Yeah, I'm Alexander Gold on Instagram, Tumblr and Twitter. Um, and then YouTube is Alexander Gold Tube. Um, cause someone took Alexander Gold, even though they don't even use it. <laughs> yeah. When I am friends with Oprah, that person's going to pay or Taylor. <laughs> when I become friends with Taylor Swift, that person's going to have another thing come in. 
don't get on my list because if I become friends with Taylor, I'm giving her that list and she will go down the list and you will all die. I was reading through your tweets and you tweeted the other night about brainstorming cat names. What were some of the names you guys came up with? Well, Taylor said that she, like, she really likes the idea of, of serious names. Something that, you know, like Meredith, that wasn't just like a, you know, like Pixie or, you know, Fluffy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said that she should name her cat something with like, like eight names, like something like Royal and British, like <laughs> Chauncey, Billingsworth, Hamilton, something. And I forget which one that she had, but she was like Chauncey. So if Taylor Swift names her cat Chauncey, it's all because you- I am... Yeah, I I would claim royalties, but then also Taylor would kill me. <laughs> um, yeah, but so Chauncey was one that we that we brainstormed that she liked. My dog also apparently also likes Chauncey. Very supportive. Dog. <laughs> He's so supportive. And then I think the lo- only other question I had is if you could pick or have had to pick a favorite moment of the entire night. Do you have one? Oh gosh, um, you know the whole. I don't think I can pick a moment. Because honestly, like those types of experiences, I, how do I put it? Those types of, I, all right, I'm trying to put it in a way that doesn't sound like privileged or stupid, but like I have, working in the entertainment industry, you have like, I weird things happen. And especially when you become, you know, some type of social media tastemaker, like I've, I've, you know, found myself becoming, you know, you get invited to weird events and get to do weird stuff all the time and like things happen. But overall, like, there is no greater experience than meeting someone who you are genuinely inspired by and who is, you know, brilliant and having them not be a dick. Like, there are just so many times you, like, meet people and they're just like, it's like, I get them being a dick if, like, I'm one of those fans that mobs them outside of somewhere. Like, (laughs) those people need to stop. Um, I saw the vamps get like mobbed last night and someone like threw something at them. And I was just like, what, like, what does anyone gain out of that experience? But um, being able to go back in that type of environment where it's sort of like a chill space and everyone is treating each other as equal. No one was like freaking out. I mean, a few of the band members were like, did you see that Taylor Swift is over there? And I was like, yeah, I got a picture. <laughs> um, and they were like, they were like, oh my God, you got a selfie. And I'm like, Girl, you're the band. You're verified on Twitter. <laughs> like, you just opened for Ed Sheeran. Like, go get a picture. Like, girl, bye. Um, but, like, being able to go and meet people that are so talented and so brilliant and working in an industry that can tear you down and spit you out. To see people remain so kind and humble and and the fact that throughout the night, you know, Ed would constantly, you know, at those types of events, especially when you're by yourself, there's so many times when you like look up and suddenly everyone's having conversations in circles and you're out of the circle. And Ed would always make sure that someone moved over and was like, make room for Alex. And like that type of thing, like, it wasn't like he invited me there and forgot about me and just like, you know, like granted me the pr- privilege of being in the room with him, but didn't spend any time. Like... Ed talked to me at length about Game of Thrones and Taylor, you know, stood listening while I talked to her brother about, you know, my career and stuff and like contributed to a conversation and seeing people who are able to stand there and listen and engage and who care about everyone in the room and who care about the people they're talking to and don't just like tune out because you're not important. That, that is what's a privilege and what is what is incredible in this industry and being able to be back there and, you know, be it's, it's hard to not be inspired and fulfilled um, and happy. And, and it was great. And it was, it was cool when I left and some fans were asking me about it. And what was weird is I like left and some fan already had like knew me from the picture I had just Instagrammed. Like she was like, I just saw this on a Taylor blog. And I was just like, I just posted that from inside 30 minutes ago. Um, but like the, like, like being able to talk to them and at least, you know, share my experience, like that's all that type of stuff is cool to me. And, you know, I, I, you know, wish that it was possible that every single person could have this experience. And I hope that everyone could have this experience, but you know, if it only happens to a a few lucky people and I'm one of those lucky people, I am incredibly grateful. And, you know, however I can share that story or, you know, share stuff with the fans without, you know, giving away 
you know, secrets and stuff that I feel belong and should stay in that room between the people in it, you know, I'm happy to do that. I, I love that. And I hope I get to have more of these experiences. They're great. I'm emotional. Yeah, how could you not be? Oh, my God. I, like, left that room, and I, like, I I think I cried on my walk home. I probably <laughs> I probably cried on my walk home. Those, I always get, like, emotional during those types of things. It was too late for me to call my mom and cry to my mom on the phone, but I probably would have cry- called and cried to my mom on the phone. I just, like, I, as, to, if, if I had ever thought that this was possible as a kid, like, bye. Like, I don't, I don't know, I would have never thought that these things would happen to me, and, and they're great, and, and I'm grateful. And you didn't cry during the event, which is awesome. I probably would not have been able to contain myself. I, I cried while Ed was singing. But, like, not, like, you know, like a Lauren Conrad single tear. <laughs> not, like, I did not, like, full cry. Let me tell you, Ed's own team, they were fangirling harder than me. I thought they needed my shoulder to lean on. Like, they were, like, I, I was, like, talking to him. I was, like, what do you do? And he was, like, one of the guys was, like, yeah, I'm, like, his, like, live TV performance producer. And I was, like, oh, that must be great. And he was, like, yeah, because Ed really, like, you know, he sings to the soul and he just, like, gets you. And he, and I was, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> He's, like, are you okay? Like, how are you? I was, like, I'm the one, like, I should not be okay. What are you, like, what are you, how are you? Um... <laughs> Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, I, I don't, there's no way to describe it. It's, you know, it's incredible. And if I ever have the chance again, or, you know, if I ever come into contact with Taylor again, which is possible, I mean, working in this entertainment industry, or work, you know, if any of them come and perform on America's Got Talent, or, you know, anything I work on in the future, I'll be able to see them again. And, you know, I'm happy to be in places where I can support and, and, you know, support people that I love and that I think are worthy of that support. And, you know, the people that I usually tweet about are mostly people that I think are genuinely talented and deserving of support or really, really hot <laughs> or they're just really, really hot. That works. Priorities. Yeah. I think Zac Efron, regardless of whatever he does, will always deserve our, res- our, our support. <laughs> and he's in, I, he's also, you know, one of the, you know, members of the coven. He was in a movie with Taylor. Very true. That's right. true. So he's like a, I mean, he's obviously not one of like the leaders, but like he definitely has a cloak in his back closet. Like he's ready. (laughs) He has like, he's ready with like candles and like a red CD, like ready to go. I really feel like someone is going to hear this and turn it into a fan fiction series. Oh my God. I would, I would love if there was a fan fiction series. The Coven starring Taylor Swift. I toyed with the idea of like creating like a parody Twitter, but I was just like, you need to stop. I was like, you <laughs> are a grown man. You need to stop. And so I just do them when I see them on my Twitter. When I, I Just whenever I see a good picture of Taylor, I just like pretending like she's a witch. <laughs> One quick question I had. So when she was watching the World Cup, was she just standing by herself? No, she was sitting on a couch like with, I guess, some woman who might have been her publicist or her manager or a friend or someone. She had a sparkly top on. She was, I saw her in the balcony. Was she a redhead? I don't remember. I really don't. There were so many like people and there were a bunch of like very industry folks in the room that like, I don't even, I don't, I don't know. Um, I wasn't able really to focus on a lot of things. I was, you could say I was, I was happy, free, confused and lonely at the same time. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't remember, but she was, you know, the World Cup was on in the room and Taylor just sat down on the couch at one point and just looked over and she just had her head like slouched to the side and just had this like look on her face like, what? Like, it was, I wish I had like taken a picture of it, even though like, you know, obviously that would have been so inappropriate if I was just standing in the room, like standing in a corner taking pictures of Taylor Swift. But like, it was like literally the perfect reaction picture to like, Anytime anyone's talking about something I don't care about. <laughs> but she like took pictures with anyone who wanted a picture and she was talking and hanging and having fun. And, you know, she was, she was great. And I, I feel like Taylor and I would, would enjoy the same drinks. Well, congratulations. It sounds like really you had an awesome time. Yes, I am. I'm blessed. I'm never washing my shirt. My shoulder will be cured of all diseases forever. Um, since yes. she laid her heavenly head on it. Um, <laughs> that was such a cute picture. Yeah, I uh, I literally, I sat down. I was like, okay, two pictures. First cute, go. And then we did it. And then I said, <laughs> Taylor's a surprise face. And like for the cute one, she just put her head down. And I was like, 
queen. <laughs> I wanted to, the third one I wanted to do, but t- Ed had to leave was like, I wanted to do like all of us, like a uh, listening to Ed Sheeran music face. Ooh. AKA all of us crying. <laughs> 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 next time. Yeah. Next you have time. to get that next time. Yeah. No, don't, don't, whenever I go into situations like this, I have like the, like, you know, the backup plans. It's like, if, if something happens, I know what selfies I want. If I have the opportunity, I know what to go for. I'm ready. Well, I really hope for your sake, there is a next time when we get to hear more amazing stories from you. Yes. The fan fiction will continue. Well, you guys <laughs> should all check out his YouTube. He did a video, I think like, what was it the day after the concert? Uh, yeah, I filmed it the night after the concert. So I think that was really like getting your pure emotional reaction as raw as possible. Yes, definitely. And also follow his Twitter at Alexander Gold because his tweets are hilarious, even when they're not about Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so happy you guys think so. Well, is there anything else you want to tell our listeners? I mean, I think that's about it. I, uh, I love being a fan and I love you know, the community I've been able to form with my Twitter and I'm excited for, you know, what could come from it and what could grow. I'm, I'm working with some people to, you know, sort of rebrand a little bit and, and make this into a thing that, you know, could be a thing I do. I don't know. This could be like experiences I have with people. I have, I have some stuff coming up with, you know, other people that I'm doing and I don't know. Well, if Taylor said it was the right career move, you know, you're set for life. Well, duh. If ta- like, t- like, I'm putting that's gonna be that top of my resume. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor Swift approves of this career. Thank you. I told Sam to delete his whole resume and just have it. Taylor Swift wrote me a letter and called me an incredible writer just for everything he ever does. You should make sure your listeners are following him too. Sam Lansky. He's a deputy culture editor at Time, and he like he's like my like. I don't know, Grandma Willow Swifty. <laughs> he like is like the willow tree I go and pray to to give me Swifty knowledge. He's the one who told me that Ed Sheeran has an all too well on his new album, which is the song that he performed at the concert, which ta- sounds Taylor Swift had to have had some input in that song. Have you heard it? Photograph? Yes. Only in the video. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, of her the, singing. Uh, have you, uh, from, from Hammerstein? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she knew every word. It's, there's something, I guarantee you, Taylor had something to do with that song. Because the lyricism, the way that he sang it, the format of the song, and, and the, the way that it was built, like, that had Taylor's name all over it. I guarantee you. I'm calling it. <laughs> if she didn't help co-write it, if she didn't Im- give him any input, then that was inspired by his time on the tour. Because that is a Taylor Swift style song. I've only heard it once, but based on what I've heard, I agree. It was so good. Ugh, it's going to be so good. I'm so ready for Taylor's album. We all are. I know. Good. More than you ready. You all should be ready. You all should be ready. All right, well, this was amazing. Thanks so much for joining us and sharing your story, and I hope that we get to talk to you sometime on the show again. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for letting me blab for... <laughs> a long time oh my gosh this is a long <laughs> interview um yeah thank you for having me um i can't wait to talk to you guys again it was a pleasure and if you guys ever if any any fans ever see me somewhere like say hello because i love all of you guys and you guys have been all so supportive and i hate when i see people tweeting me like oh i saw you at this concert and i was too scared to say hello i don't bite i have not learned all the dark magic that taylor swift knows i won't say <laughs> so yeah i love you guys all right well thanks again for joining us and we'll definitely talk to you again soon awesome thanks guys Bye. Bye. thank you thank you so for all of our new listeners who are fans of alexander gold and uh are now listening to our show uh we have a few contact methods you can you can get in touch with us if you like um and also to our regular fans so um just as a reminder to press the subscribe button on itunes and it will download the latest episode for you guys automatically you don't even have to Uh, go in and manually download it every time. So um, if you do want to contact us with uh, our regular submissions, mini segments, emails, whatever you like, uh, you can reach us uh, the following ways. Uh, You can reach us on Twitter at SwiftCast13. You can reach us uh, through email, theswiftcast13 at gmail.com. 
Uh, you can go to our website, swiftcast13.com, and you can contact us through there. Uh, you can go to our Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the Swiftcast, or you can find us on Taylor Connect also. Uh, our username is swiftcast13. And yeah, new or old listeners, we'd love to hear from you, you know, what you liked about this episode. Uh, if we have Alexander back, which we definitely would love to in the future, what else you'd want to hear him talk about on the show. If you were at the show at the Hammerstein, let us know what your experience was like. There were so many fans there. I'm sure there are a lot of amazing stories. So we'd love to hear from you. So for now, for episode 57, this has been Ashley. Haley. Nate. And Steph. Thanks, guys. Bye. Peace out, Swift Scouts. Girl, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of SwiftCast. Visit us on the web at theswiftcast.com. The theme song for SwiftCast was written and performed by Sydney and Chuck. SwiftCast is not directly affiliated with Taylor Swift, Big Machine Label Group, or 13 Management.